With the mental health crisis, both locally and nationally, why did the government cease the extra 10 sessions under a mental health care plan? Unfortunately, 10 sessions per year is insufficient for some clients and it also stops them utilising crisis services and emergency services. Darlene, the former government commissioned an evaluation of better acts. Sorry. My name's Sue. Oh, sorry, Sue, my apologies. Sue, uh, the former government had uh, an evaluation of the program that's called Better Access. For people who aren't familiar with Better Access, it's the program where you can see your GP to get a mental health treatment plan and you're eligible for subsidised psychology sessions. The evaluation showed that although the program is called Better Access, it was leading to worse access, that people in communities like Mildura were having less access to psychologists. That all mental the mental health social workers and occupational therapists. In, in terms of the who are also eligible yeah. under the Better Access program, yes. So people were having less access to psychological services. No. This, is, this is true, Michael. No. For people who were living... The, the people who were mostly being able to benefit from better access were wealthy people living in our major cities. That's what the evaluation by Melbourne University showed. We need more psychologists out here then. We do need more psychologists, that's true. But what we did, what we are working through is improving the equity and access of better access. By cutting it from 20 to 10. Mm. What happened with the increase in sessions is that those sessions were taken by people who were already in the system. We saw a 7% drop in new people being able to access better access. I'll, I'll ask Darlene, what impact is it having here in, in your community? Um, <clears throat> so mental health um, and suicide prevention and access to services um, touches very close to home. Um, Thank you for that question, Sue. And she called you Darlene because we were having conversations about that today. Um, I'll take that. <laughs> Thanks, Darlene. Um, so, you know, I have lost a daughter uh, to suicide. Sorry, Darlene. Um, and a number of my immediate family over a very one a year. Um, and I'm absolutely disappointed that the access to mental health services in our area hasn't changed in almost a decade. Mm. John, again, when you travel around and, and you see this, and we've seen particularly with the impact before with drought and now we've seen the impact of floods, what, in, what are you seeing in terms of mental health and stress on people on the land? Oh, well, uh, uh, I think the worst comes, when it comes to... When it's really bad is when you have generations of farmers and, and one of them has to sell the farm and because, because of drought and all the rest of the things that happen. But that's farming, you know. Whether, whether climate change is changing that or not, uh, it probably is. But that's, that's when suicide comes in, I think, when, when uh, the, the third generation loses the farm. And that's, that's terrible for them. And I can understand how bad that's... I, I guess farmers become attached to the land like mm. Indigenous people, mm. you know. It becomes sure. part of who you are. And, um, so yeah, I haven't got really much more to say about that. Well, the difficulty too is that there's now going to be another series of buybacks and that will lead to water being taken out of your communities and that is going to be horrendous for Mildura, for the Mallee. And buybacks are coming and I fought so hard. In fact, I, I crossed the floor on the Murray-Darling Basin plan because I didn't think it was going to be good for regional communities. But Tanya Plebisek is coming with a chequebook to a place near you. And unfortunately, when water goes out of the community, it doesn't come back. And with it goes school children and then schools and hairdressers and everybody else is affected. And that is bad, lazy Labor policy. I just want to go back to Sue. <laughs> you, you've heard from the Minister and you raised specifically, and, and we heard from Darwin as well, the impact specifically of cutting those numbers of, of, uh, of, of mental health um, visits that someone is able to have. From the answer you got tonight, does that satisfy you at all? No, because as a mental health professional working in community, in a private, and I've worked public as well, 10 sessions a year is not enough, not enough. to keep the clients safe without them having to go back to other services. Sue, so we'll, we'll reinstate cheaper. it, Sue. We will reinstate it. I'd back love to you 20. to. Thank you. So, um, Sue... Uh, 
So, like you, I'm, I'm, I was a mental health worker. I worked in acute adult inpatient units for most of my working life. I've seen firsthand the experience of people living with, with complex and chronic mental ill health. What we are doing is now working with the sector where to, to come to find you know what are the most appropriate solutions so that we can see equity of access so that people in communities like yours aren't left further behind. And unfortunately, that's what we saw through the increase in sessions in better access, that someone living in Mildura was much less likely to be able to get into the system than someone living in Randwick. And we have to, yep. we've, talk, we've spoken today about postcode healthcare. This is the example of postcode healthcare that we have Darling. to turn around. Yeah, I, I think that there's a facet of issues here. One is um, access, two is the resources. Um, like GPs, like nurses, um, attracting mental health clinicians, um, youth mental health clinicians um, into our region. If we're lucky enough to introduce them, um, we have nowhere to house them. Um, so, yeah, you know, crisis. our housing crisis at the moment, if we've got nurses paying half of their weekly re um, wages into rent, how do we expect um, to attract and, and maintain and keep mm. um, staff in the area? That, that, that may bring it.